What's good, baby? We back today. We having a little bit of fun. You know, if y'all know me, man, I, I've done in the I've done a couple tech videos in the past, man. I'm a techie. You know, I love tech. You know, I work in tech. You know what I mean? Like, so sometimes I like to talk about tech. I like to branch away from, you know, some of the more, you know, the heavier videos and stuff like that. So we talking about the iPhone 13 today, man. We talking about Apple and what I think Apple needs to do in the future. All right. I, I, I love Apple as a company. I'm a huge Apple fanboy. I have a lot of Apple products. I have Apple stock. I'm invested in Apple stock. Like, I'm heavily invested in Apple. I've been rocking with Apple for a very long time. But with the recent announcement of the iPhone 13, um, I think there have been a lot of people who have been very underwhelmed with what Apple is doing. Uh, me being one of those people, right? Apple has moved from the iPhone 10 to the iPhone 13, and that transition hasn't really been all that huge, right? You know, I, I think at this point, we kind of all know what's going to happen. Every year Apple releases a new phone, it's going to have a slightly better camera. They're probably going to, you know, increase the, the screen size or screen resolution a little bit. And they're going to add one or two gimmicky features and then call it a day. And then we have a new iPhone. Um, and I feel like incrementally, year over year, we're not getting as as exciting, you know, tech and as exciting iPhones as what we did in the past. Like, look, I got this right here, man. A lot of y'all youngies, y'all not going to know what this is. This is an iPod Touch from like, I don't even know, 2010 maybe? I don't even remember, man. This is like the second generation iPod Touch with the silver back, 8 gigabyte. I remember I had this. This is when I used to put all my music on here. Wiz Khalifa, Drake, everybody. I was in like 8th grade, ninth grade. This is my first iPod ever. And this is where Apple was really, you know, like really, really innovative, man. They were making exciting products. I remember I was super excited to get this. Just having an having a iPod with a touchscreen, that was crazy. You know, before that, we didn't really have any iPod with a touchscreen or something. Like, like this was the first iPod with a touchscreen. And then right here, I got my first trap phone. I'm, not, I'm just playing. It's not a trap phone. But this is the iPhone 4, and this is the first iPhone that I ever got. And I remember when this dropped. You know, I remember when the iPhone 3 dropped, or the 3GS. Um, like I said, young engine, y'all not going to know about this. But it was super exciting, man, because Apple was really at the cutting edge of creating something that the world had never seen before. You know what I mean? A touchscreen phone, it's kind of unheard of. Like, I remember being in eighth grade, and uh, I had the little slide phone. I had the what was I can't even remember what it was now like it was a uh, it was a Samsung but it was like a Samsung slide phone that was like my first texting phone had the little trackpad or like the little keypad where you could type um, and then the iPhone came out and everyone was like yo we got to get an iPhone you can put your music on it it was just a whole new space in tech now like touchscreen phones that was a thing and Apple was really at the forefront of that. Um, and I feel like even after that, Apple has some really great iPhones. I had an iPhone 5 as well, or 5S, I should say. And that was probably one of my favorite phones, man, with the Touch ID. Um, but I think Apple has really reached a place where they've kind of plateaued. They've either, one, they've run out of ideas, or two, they just have a formula that works so much, and they own so much of the space that they don't even feel the need to innovate. And I think one of the issues is they're releasing iPhones too quickly. Like, we get a new iPhone every year. Okay, I currently have an iPhone 10R. This is my current phone, the 10R. I love it. I've been rocking with this since 2018, and at this point, I really don't feel the need to upgrade. I was I was thinking about potentially upgrading to the 13, you know, depending on what it had. But when I saw the features, I was kind of like, bro, y'all y'all slacking a little bit. So I really think what needs to happen in the future, man, is Apple. Please, if if anybody from Apple is watching this, take some more time to develop an iPhone. Uh. I know year increments, you know, you, you, from, from like a marketing perspective, you guys want to have a, a new iPhone every single year. I get it. You know, you want to get people excited. You want to have people sort of locked into a regular cadence of releasing an iPhone. And I think it's cool, you know, but at the same time, I feel like a lot of iPhone users, they're already in your ecosystem. People who've been using an iPhone for multiple years, they probably like iMessage, they might have iCloud. You know, there's somebody who's probably going to continue to buy iPhones in the future. So if you hold off an extra year, let's say Apple took two years, two years, instead of the one year increments that they're doing right now, two years, two year increments, and they develop a new phone. If you're taking two years, you can pack so much more innovation, so many more features, and you can really refine a lot of the features that you have if you take a little bit more time. So we take those one year intervals that they're dropping phones right now, and they push it out to two years, man, and we get the iPhone 14. And then another two years, and then we get the iPhone 15. These iPhones are going to be bigger leaps 
you know, it's going to be a bigger leap between the iPhone 14 and 15 and iPhone 15 and 16 if we're taking two year intervals in between because they have a lot of time for research and development. They have a lot of time to refine the design. They have a lot of time to get feedback from uh, current customers who are using the current version of the phone to figure out, hey, what can we really fix? Uh, but I feel like Apple's in such a state now where they just want to pump out a phone every year that they're not really taking the time to refine the phones. Right. And they're not really taking the time to make the phones exciting anymore. It's just more so like what's easiest to pack into a year. We only have a year. All right. Let's figure out a way to make a better a better screen and a better camera, better screen, better camera. And at this point, I really feel like we've reached the peak when it comes to better screens and better cameras. Like, dude, your eyes can only perceive so many pixels on the screen and so many color. Like, I think at this point. With the OLED screens that we have and with the screens that, you know, uh, Apple has on the iPhone 13 Pro, um, like, it's good enough, bro. Honestly, it, it, it's good enough. We don't need, uh, like, a super 40K, you know, I'm just making that up, but 40K uh, display with, you know, 400 million different colors and, dude, it's fine. So, if you're listening to this, dear Apple, I love your products. I love, uh, you know, your MacBooks. I have two MacBook Pros. I use an iMac. Um, I have an iPhone. I wear an Apple Watch. Like I'm, I'm heavily invested into the ecosystem, um, and I really want to see Apple succeed as a company. And I really want to, I want to have the same, I want to have the same excitement that I had when this dropped, when this iPod dropped, and when this iPhone 4 dropped. This was like revolutionary, man. I want to see something that makes me say, "Hey, I gotta upgrade my phone, man. Like I have to go get this." But like over the past couple of years, all the way from the iPhone XR to the iPhone 11 to the iPhone 12 to the iPhone 13, I, I just have not felt anything that's made me want to upgrade. And, and, and like one last thing I'll say, too, is I think even in today's society, me being one of those people, I, I'm a techie and we have this sort of addiction to upgrading phones, you know, on a yearly basis. Uh, a lot of people just feel like they got to upgrade every year. And I try to keep myself from doing that. You know, I try to go maybe like four years. I use a phone for four years, and then at the end of the four years, I'll be like, all right, maybe it's time to upgrade. You know, maybe it's time to uh, check out something new if it's feasible for me at the time. Um, but if Apple switched over to that two-year research and development cycle as well, you're looking at just, uh, you know, kind of quelling some of that uh, anxiety that people have about getting the new phone, right? Because if they have two years before they know the next phone is going to come out, they kind of have to stick with their iPhone 13 for two years, or iPhone 14 for two years, and they got to rock with it for a little bit longer. So number one, Apple, you'll be saving people money because they're not going to be upgrading their phone every year. Number two, you're going to be saving the environment because there's going to be less people throwing their phones in the garbage, you know, every year. And then number three, you're going to have a better phone at the end of those two years. And maybe not two years, I might be pressing it, maybe a year and a half, but switch the development cycle out have a little bit more time for that research and development and make a better phone, man. That's that's all I got to say. iPhone 13 was super underwhelming. I think the only thing from the Apple, uh, like the Apple keynote that I, I kind of was rocking with was the iPad mini. It looks cool. I like the fact that it has Apple Pencil 2 support. Um, you know, it, it just, it that was like the, the best piece of tech and the, the piece of tech I was most excited about just to kind of see the refinements. But iPhone, man, you guys are you guys are slacking. If you want to talk to me, you want to get some some ideas, you know, potentially put me on on your research and development team hey hit me up you know my ig everything's linked down below um but you know apple great company man i think apple has a lot of potential in the future uh, especially with their ecosystem especially with the fact that they kind of produce everything in-house uh, when it comes to their computers with mac os ios uh, but really 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 think that they need to pivot in a new direction and and make something cool we already got you know we we know 5g's popping we got good screens already. You know, your cameras are great. Your cameras are like, they're, they're good. You know, for the average user, I'm not talking about like filmmakers out here, pro users and stuff like that. But for the average person buying an iPhone, I think today's current iPhones, the base models all the way up into the pro models are good enough. We have to focus on doing more uh, and, and, and doing things that are going to push the, uh, the industry in a new direction. Apple, you were that leader. With the iPhone 4, you were that leader with the iPhone 3, iPhone 3GS, all those all those initial phones. Let's see you do it again. We're entering a new era. Uh, but that's all I got to say about that. And I will catch you all in the next video. So leave your thoughts down below on the iPhone 13. Let me know what you think Apple should do. Are you upgrading your phone this year? Yes or no? Uh, and if not, let me know why. And I probably know why. It's probably because, you know, the phone looks exactly the same as last year. But that's neither here nor there. 
Make sure you leave a thumbs up. It's been your boy, just Chris, as always. Follow me on my social media down below, IG and Twitter, at the one Chris Jordan. And I will catch you guys in the next video. Peace.